Hello, these are Yuri Dukovny and Dior Polak with AWS Solutions Architecture. We'll show you how to enable AWS Single Sign-On for your AWS organizations and how to configure its basic settings. We're now logged into the console of our organization's master account. Let's go to the AWS Single Sign-On console and enable AWS Single Sign-On here. And this is assuming that AWS organizations already enabled. Right. If organizations is not enabled, we'll get a prompt to enable it. OK, that was quite easy to enable AWS SSO. Now, let's look at the configuration for identity sources. By default, we have the AWS SSO internal provider selected. We can change it to Active Directory and select the local Manage Active Directory or AD Connector. But note, that the directories that show up here are directories that are configured on the same region that we enabled AWS single sign-on on. So make sure you enable it in the right region. Another option, which we're going to show you later on today, is configuring the external identity provider, a simple process of exchanging metadata files. Let's set up some basic settings in our accounts in preparation for the next demo. First, let's create some permission sets. And remember, permission sets are actually an access policy templates that AWS SSO is going to provision in the corresponding AWS accounts. Right. So we, we're going to use the same job function policy as we did before. So we're going to select the support user and create a permission set from it and another one for the network administrator, just like before. Later on, when we're going to assign users, we're going to select the accounts that show up here that are synchronized from our organizations and assign them to specific permission sets. Can we also have a look how to configure a business application with AWS SSO? Yes, definitely. Let's go ahead and configure a new application. I can either select an application that are pre-configured in the application catalog or create my, my own custom SAML 2.0 application. I'm going to configure Dropbox, so I'm going to just select it from the list. I'm going to add the application, and then I'm going to select the configuration instructions that will tell me how to configure my Dropbox setup. This is very convenient because it goes step by step to configure the Dropbox application, and it also populates the right field so I can just copy and paste them to Dropbox. Let's go to Dropbox. I'm already logged on as an administrator on the settings pane for the single sign-on configuration. I'm going to copy from the guide the identity provider sign-in URL and paste it in here. Next, I'm going to copy the identity provider sign-out URL and also paste it in the right location in Dropbox. Next, I want to download my AWS single sign-on certificate. And again, pasting that, or selecting that actually, as my certificate for the federation relationship. Another thing I should do is to copy the SSO sign-in URL so that my configuration will also support the service provider initiated login flow. I'm going to copy that and go down into my application start URL and paste it. Back at Dropbox, I'm going to enable single sign-on. Select optional and save the settings. I'm also going to save the settings in AWS SSO. And my application is configured. When I will con configure my users and groups, I can then later assign them in here. We hope you enjoyed this short video. It were Yuri Dukovny and Lior Polak with AWS Solutions Architecture. Please also check out our webinar on YouTube for more details.